Hi, I'm Jim Doty, and welcome to Chapman Shorts. I'm here with Adrian Brennan. Hi, Jim. Hi. Uh, so happy to be here. Adrian's one of my favorite people who also happens yeah. to be a Chapman graduate. Yes, yes. Not that long ago. <laughs> and not from our film school either, no, no. right? Yes, I graduated in uh, counseling psychology. But you are a moviegoer. Right? I am, and I, as you know, I'm a big supporter of the film school. Absolutely. And just everything made, else that Chapman does. Just made a magnificent gift to Chapman, which we are deeply appreciative of. And now we're going to show you what our film school I'm produces excited. in the way of students and film. Uh, we're here with Kevin Acevedo. Uh, Kevin, welcome to the show. Hello. And <laughs> uh, we're going to be screening one of your Chapman short, which is, I guess, the short film you produced for as an undergraduate here at Chapman. Uh, I was a grad student. A graduate student. Yeah. Okay. What was your undergraduate school? Uh, I went to Cal State Fullerton. Uh huh. And yeah. then, how did you find Chapman? It was uh, it was uh, nearby. And nearby. Yeah. Right. But I mean, that's not the major reason that I, I came here. Um, I just really liked the program. Saw they were putting the new the new film school in. I wanted. To, you know, try out that cutting edge technology from the building and stuff, so. Hey, it'd be interesting, what did you major in at Cal State Fullerton? English. English, yeah. you think that's a good major for uh, uh, entering a graduate film program? I do, I think it's, it, it, especially for directing because you have to do a lot of literary analysis, have to do a lot of reading of stories and dissecting stories and it really helps for a director because then later you're um, dissecting scripts and so. When did you first know you wanted to do film? Oh, wow. Um, I, I mean, since I was a kid, I really wanted to do film. I really actually wanted to be an actor. I, I loved Charlie Chaplin films uh -huh. when I was like six, seven years old, and I thought I wanted to be an actor, and then adolescence hit, and I felt very shy after that, I uh -huh. guess. And, um, and I saw Reservoir Dogs, I think when I was 10, and that was the first time I really noticed like there was a writer-director you know, sort of thing, and I, I, I really, that, that film blew me away, and I, I realized I wanted to write and direct films. And I wanted At to be the age a, of 10? Well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good for you. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Yeah. And how, aside from the close proximity that Chapman University was to to your undergraduate school, how what was the criteria you used to select Chapman? Um, it, was, it, it, was, it was it was close to home, which was important. But there, um, I really think it's a, a good school because um, you you own your own film, which is very unique for a film school. And also, they there's a lot of um, aid from the school. There's a, a budget and um, yeah, I just thought it was a really good fit for me. Well, let's talk about this uh, film that you did as a, uh, your, your short film, which I guess is the capstone requirement uh, right. in the graduate program in our conservatory of film, which is our graduate program. Right. Uh, how did you come up with the idea for Last Page? I was, uh, well, it was, it, I, I co-wrote and directed it, but um, I was actually experiencing writer's block. And, um, you know, it was, it was thesis time, and I actually took a, a script from um, a screenwriter in the program that I really enjoyed the script. But then, after so many times, I read it ad nauseum, and I, I realized that it wasn't right for me because it was too dramatic, and I really wanted to do something light. So this was a fellow student yeah. script that you were trying to adapt. Yeah, I was trying to. I was originally trying to direct this one, but it was about um, things I hadn't experienced. It was. It was about like a. So you didn't have any ownership no, to it. No, so well, I just didn't feel like like it, I would be a good fit for it. Mm -hmm. So I, I ended up writing about writer's block. Because you had it. Because so I had writer's block. So they always, about people always say the, the old adage, write what you know, and sure. so I had writer's block, and <laughs> so I started writing about writer's block, and. Um, it, it got to the point where it was either just too dull and boring or too esoteric. Uh -huh. And um, everybody that read the script that I was writing just didn't like it. So um, I was kind of put in a position where I was supposed to choose a different script. And I started reading other scripts, started reading other scripts. And um, I was about three months out from production when I wrote the last page. And um, I just, I, I locked myself into my office on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, just started writing about, uh, just making fun of myself and my desire to write like a, a good story, you uh -huh. know, and uh, that's how it came about. Well, well, but your block, I'm sorry, yeah, your block came at the end as opposed to most writers, they, they well, have no, my, a, a hard time starting it. Well, my block was always there and I was just writing about the block, but I never really had a, a point to it. And then <laughs> <laughs> this, this was the first one that actually had a point and I actually felt like resonated and... Um, and then the, the producer did a draft of it, and, um, and then after that, you know, I just reshaped it from there as well, and, and that's how it you know, really came about. You know, it's good there, but I don't know, if, have you ever had writer's block? I, all, yes, yeah. especially if you're on yeah, a we deadline. All have it, yes. especially, yeah. And, because I, you, and yeah. then you're, it's kind of like waking up in the middle of the night and trying to get back to sleep. You can't because you're so focused on 
what am I going to say and how am I going to write this and, and sort of punishing yourself. Right. But, but this is a good therapy. Yes. If you have writer's block, yeah. write about writer's block, <laughs> right? Yeah, I would, I would actually yourself. not recommend it to anyone because it gets, it, it's very weird, especially on set when you're actually in there when I was shooting it and then a lot of times it would parallel, but I really took it to the extreme. I mean, it's really comedy and um, slapsticky at, at moments, like things that just couldn't really happen. So that came from your Charlie Chaplin uh, yeah, I guess so. Well, I, I, I think that, you know, it's, uh, short films, uh, you, you know, they're, they're rooted in comedy. And so I, I, I just really felt that was a good fit, yeah. Well, let's, let's take a look at it. Great. Uh, <laughs> Craig, let's roll. <laughs> I'm so glad that I married you. Dave, I don't even know why I came here. What do you want to say to me? Look, I f***ed it all up. There's one thing I gotta tell you. After it's said, then... I'll completely respect whatever it is you decide with regards to us. Okay. Very well. months that I've been in here have made me realize something that, you know, that I'm sick of going to bed alone. I send the poor guy to hell and back, and when it comes time for him to be vulnerable, he can't say the one thing to keep her. He, he freezes. He, he, there's nothing to do, nothing to say, no action. He's just... Jason, uh, relax. Every great line, every great moment, everything memorable has been done before. I thought that when Dave touches the glass, that's uh, enough. No, he... He has to say something to get her to touch the glass. Two people realizing true love separated by a pane of glass. That's tragedy. That's real life. 
Maybe you should take a walk? Get some air? Have contact with people? <laughs> Could be good for you. When I said walk, I didn't mean the liquor store. Oh. And don't get any coffee either, Jason. Seriously, what? I can't handle you and your... Oh my god. <laughs> Not today, okay? Do I really look like that? I'm kind of a bitch. Don't. I promise I will not get any coffee. Mary Bell. Mary Bell. Pay for that? Uh, yeah, of course. No, no, that. There's nothing in it. You mucked it up. Two fifty-five. Whoa, 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 wait. You're you're charging me full price for a medium coffee? No. Th this this cup can't be worth more than what, like fifteen cents? No, no. I'm charging you for the profit that the cup would have provided. Oh, you disagree? Yeah, well, I just think it's a little silly, yeah? If I went into your house of worship and pissed all over your god, would you think that was a little silly? What? Would you? No. Well, right on. Uh, and a pack of Lucky Strikes, too? <clears throat> 585. Debit goal? Um, <clears throat> our system's down. Did you write that? Why? It's poetic. Well, I am a writer. Oh, yeah. Shit. All right, look, I only have enough for the large coffee and the smokes. Come on, can you sure. forget about the Are stupid coffee? Are you sure cup? you want to fuck no, with me now? Because no, 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 man. I'm no, look. I'm, uh, maybe you can help me out. What would you say to a woman? What are you? Why? Relax! What? I... I'm a writer, too. You're a writer, I'm a writer. Writer's a writer. What could a guy who screwed up, a guy who's in jail, say to the woman he loves to keep her from leaving him forever? Tell me that, and I'll pay for the cup. Oh, got it. Oh, it's gold. What? It's pure gold. Great. Give uh, me the cash. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Get ready. You complete me. You complete, complete me. You com... What? That was good enough for Jerry Maguire. Why, why? Tom Cruise said it in the film. You forgot your cup? You know why I stopped you? Uh, the cup, sir? Yeah, so you are aware that littering's a crime. Sorry, sir, I'll, yeah, I'll just pick it up. Don't move. Is that how your parents raised you, Jason? Just to drop your stuff when you're done with it? You gonna teach your kids that? You know, if everybody littered like you, you know what the street would look like? I, um. Look, sir, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a really difficult time right now. I just don't, I don't feel like myself. I, I'm not interested. Look, sir, I, I, I have writer's block. And that's an excuse? No, it's just... Writer's block leads to literature. No, it's, it's severe, though, sir. I... 
Imagine if you lost all will to shoot people. You being funny? Uh, Did you just write a joke? To to protect people by shooting other people, I just, <laughs> you know, my, my brain's just fried right now. Really? On what? Look at uh, me. Just coffee. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll just, I'll just pick it up. Just be quiet. Yes, sir. You know what? Sit down. It's... You know, this, this really isn't, isn't necessary. You know, I've been nice. I've been calling you sir. Is there anything that I could, could, could say to convince you that... Is there anything I could say to convince you that... Is there anything I could say to convince you that I am fully devoted to you? Mary Bell. Mary Bell, look at me. I want to have babies with you. Lots and lots of babies. All right, you know what? We're not gonna take that. You don't talk to an officer of the law like that. What's uh, the matter with you? I wasn't, I wasn't yeah, talking to you. Put your hands you. behind oh. your back. Just like you're praying, okay? Because that's what it's gonna take to get you out of this. A miracle. All right, let's sit down. Go again for 133. Closer to what? Congratulations. Yeah? All right. <laughs> She's having a baby! It's a uh, miracle! Wait, well, what, what, what? My wife! Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm so sorry. Damn, heaven! What's with the cuffs? Uh, it's just a fetish. Uh, uh, uh cool. I'm just gonna... Listen, listen, we need to get you to the hospital. No, that's not really necessary. No, I wouldn't feel right if we didn't get you checked out. Come on, come on. I'm five weeks behind, and the editor says it's now or never. And he clearly doesn't understand the, the pursuit of truth or anything about the human condition, you know? Uh-huh. And, and, and the thing is, I only need one more line to finish. One line? Oh, hey, 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 hands on the wheel, please, please. You're fine. Don't be so dramatic. Hey, well, what if the guy tells her she isn't allowed to leave him, huh? Or what? <laughs> you know? Violence is the new sexy. Oh. Aw, does your boo-boo hurt um, you really bad? Uh, I should be I'm good. You think it'll scar? What? Scars are turn on. My ex Randall, he had a scar. And he could oomph like a flexing haired mountain man. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, you know what? I'm good if you want to drop me off right there. Hey, hey, hey! Why don't I call you Randall? Please don't. Shut up, Randall! Oh, um, you know what? Please stop. All right. Women know what they want, just like you know what I want. It's okay, you can tell me. About? What you want! Ah, I want the little things I want. I want, I want to eat in our kitchen. I want to eat in our kitchen again. Just want the little things. I want to go back to how it was. Oh, stop hitting me, please. No, no, no. You want no, it. Come on. No, no, no. Come on,
refunds. I don't want a refund. I would like to use your phone, though. Please? If I go outside again, I will probably be killed. And I know that might not matter much to you, but... I am that cup. Okay? I'm, I'm hollow, and I'm rolling around this hellhole of a city. Okay. All I wanted to do was write one honest moment. But why should I bother doing that, right? It doesn't exist in the real world. Uh, wait, wait. Next time you come in here, don't mess up the coffee can. And maybe you want to, you know, greet me with like a casual, hey man, how's it going? You know? Lily? You had to get coffee again. All right, let's see. I can't believe after all that, nothing. Oh, don't say that. I know. Watch your hands, Kate. Okay. <sighs> You're free, sweetheart. Thanks. It's the least I could do after what you've been through. Oh my God. After all you've been through, it's the least I can do. What? It's a little forced. Oh, no, Jason, it's not. It's mm. perfect. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are you just saying that?
Kevin, great flick. That was fantastic. I'm I'm compelled to ask you this question. What stage in a relationship were you in with a woman when you were writing this, or were you in a relationship? Uh, yeah, I was in a relationship. Yeah, I um, I was in a. I'm still in a relationship. It's been six years I've been together with my girlfriend, yeah. And were you trying to find a way to tell her that you loved her or? Oh, did was... you feel like it was a gift for her maybe? I don't uh, know. I felt, there, I felt her presence. You though. know what? It's, it's the girl in the, the film, I really, um, I really wanted her to be like my girlfriend. Like, you know, it's like he was playing me, but I'm not as neurotic all the time. But, you know, I, I do hit that point when I'm creatively <laughs> struggling, I guess. But yeah, she was definitely, um, I was trying to get her to play. Her. Great <laughs> acting, and uh, I mean, how much did that cost to pr produce that film? Oh, <laughs> um, it, yeah, it cost a pretty penny. Um, the the school gives us a budget, so that that really helped out. Um, and then I, I did pay all the actors too, so that took a lot of ah, the budget out. and they yeah. were good, excellent yeah. acting. Yeah. Now I understand you you exhibited at many film festivals. Yeah. It's done very well. Yeah, it's been in about uh, over fifty now. Wow. Yeah. Any it's, awards? It's it's gotten a few awards. It. it I was recently in Japan, and it won a, an award in Japan. And I got to go out there. They flew me out there and stuff. And it was it was really interesting because I had a I had an earpiece in, so you know they're translating to English. So I uh -huh. knew that it won. But to go up on stage, I had to take the earpiece out. So I walked up there, and I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> they were Everybody all speaking, speaking Japanese. Japanese. So I didn't know what I was supposed to do, and I just kind of stood there with the award. And, I said, uh, thank you, and then walked off very, you know. How do they find you, or do you submit? How, submit. Tell us about that process. Um, well, we have a great uh, festival coordinator of the school, named uh, Derek Horn, and he through, really helps out. Through Chapman out. Yeah, Film School. He really helps out with submission process and letting people know what festivals are right for the film. And Derek does a great job. Yeah. I've been with him at yeah. Sundance Film Festival, mm -hmm. Cannes Film Festival, and he's there helping the students the mm -hmm. whole way. Mm -hmm. So, and was there a, mo a monetary reward for that? N no, unfortunately. unfortunately. But the top award at that festival won twelve thousand wow. dollars. Oh, that would have been nice. Uh, yeah, it would have been. <laughs> well, listen, just to get in film festivals it's, is a great honor yeah. for a, for a, for a film. It really is. And uh, uh, thanks for the credit you reflect on Chapman University, and we wish you the best in in your career. Thank you. We're going to take a short break now, and when we come back, we're going to see a second Fantastic. flick. Fantastic. Thanks, okay? Kevin. Thanks for being on the Good show, Kevin. Luck Good luck. Bye. <laughs> Welcome back to Chapman Shorts. Well, Adrian, we have a second uh, film. That I'm we're excited. See. <laughs> and we have a young filmmaker, Gillian Monroe, who did Small Avalanches. Yes. When did you do that, Gillian? Uh, 2007. So, yeah, it's been a couple years. Did you do it in conjunction with your work at Chapman University? Yeah, it was my, it was my thesis. For, for undergraduate? For grad, sorry. Oh, for I, grad. I almost said <laughs> Where did you do your undergrad work? I did undergrad at uh, UC Berkeley. Uh -huh. Oh, fantastic. And how did you find Chapman Film School? Um, I, very, very last minute. Um, I came down here. My mom lives down here, and she was speaking to a friend about me applying to film schools, and she mentioned Chapman, and that it was a new program, and I looked into it, and I found it to be... I was applying to UCLA and NYU and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. I was like, I, this program looks really good. <laughs> what was attractive yeah. about it specifically? Um, it was the way it was designed. Um, I thought that it was a, like I was comparing the actual courses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty thorough the first year. And then um, you do get to own your film, which is important. And also that they designed the program so that they give you a $20,000 budget to make your thesis film because people can wander around for seven years trying to raise funds for their <laughs> film and then you're tired of looking at them. Of course. <laughs> so that I thought, I thought it was well designed and the faculty as well. Well it's not often that a young filmmaker uh, in our conservatory film will actually adapt a, a short from a, sh a, a short story, the great author Joyce Carol Oates. Yeah. And you did. How did that happen? I don't know. I think it was just... Um, you know, I, I did not know very much about uh, fiction filmmaking before I came to Chapman. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just a suggestion that um, Deju Magyar had made. And I thought, okay, I could write something. And I was, I don't know, my ideas were not as powerful as I wanted them to be. And I read um, some Joyce Carol short stories and Small Avalanches um, I read. And I was like, this is perfect. It has continuity of time and space, which is really good for a short film. Um, it has subject matter that um, I feel passionate about, and um, 
I thought, I, you know, I was going to go for it. So. How do you get the rights, though, to a short story? And that cost a, <laughs> it, it yeah, sounds I, like that will cost a small fortune in well, and of I itself. Well, I thought so. And I still get emails from, like, all across the world of students who are trying to adapt. Trying to, to figure out how to do the same. Yeah. And they're like, how did you? <laughs> so it's funny. I should just set up a web page. But um, <laughs> I... could be a consulting yeah, business yeah, for you on the side. start charging. <laughs> but... Um, but no, I just, I spent, I, I called three times a week um, to her literary agent for almost two months. And it was, they were nice to me, but they were not very, they have, you know, they have paying clients. They weren't reaching closure. Right. Yeah. So um, I was, I was, I was inspired by one of my professors. He said, just go there and, and just, uh, just talk to her directly. And I did. So I, I went out to Princeton. My family lives out in Connecticut, so it was easy to access. Um, I went to the campus. I found out where she was teaching. Um, and I snuck in the building. And I waited outside her, her office door <laughs> for her to come back, and I approached her. So, and, uh, when did you start reading her work? Um, I, had read, I had read some of her other like um, short stories years ago. Mm -hmm. And then one of my little sisters, um, knew I was searching for material, and mm -hmm. she reminded me of Joyce Carol Oates, and I, I picked it back up again. So I wasn't an avid mm -hmm. JCO, as they would say, <laughs> reader, so, but, um, but uh, yeah. But this short story was the right thing. Well, what did she say? Did she say, okay, I'll sell it to you, or well, she, see, she my, was, see my agent, or don't bug was, me? No, no, she was really weirded out. She was very, because she knew that I was from California. She was like, like oh, my God. Like, you flew 3,000 miles to do this, yeah, yeah. to stalk me? I should have told her that my family lives in the area, so it wasn't too weird. Uh -huh. But, um, no, she was very, very kind. She's, you know, she's like, I'm very, very supportive of students. Um, I never charge, so I didn't pay okay. anything. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. Who was the professor who said, "Go, just go there? <laughs> oh, that was, that was Deju Magar. Deju, yeah. 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 A great filmmaker himself, oh, uh, God, teaching yeah. here from Hungary and now teaching at uh, Chapman University. Yeah. We're really fortunate to have him here. Yeah. And I guess you were fortunate to have him as a student, uh, as a student, as a professor. Yeah, no, he's, he's an absolute treasure here, definitely. Well, let's, let's uh, see small avalanches. Anything we need to know about the film before we see it? Oh, no, no, just watch it. Tells it. The, st the story <laughs> tells itself. Yeah. Craig, let's roll it. <laughs> Is George at home? No. We're in town babysitting for the next three days. Is that man coming today to take the money out of the vending machines? What's that? That man who takes care of the machines, is he coming today? No. Come sometime next week. You didn't call Georgia last night, did you? No, Mom wouldn't let me. Well, somebody did. I was busy all night. You didn't call it all, huh? No. I catch your fooling around, boy. Hey, can I have a dime? I'll give you a dime. You won't leave me alone for a while?
Can you take me into town? She's gonna stop bothering me. Georgia has all the luck. <sighs> I wish I could get a job like Georgia. Well, she's a year older than you. Oh, hell. I'm 13. Besides, me and Georgia look the same. Good for you. Just fill her up if you would. Hi. Hi. It's hot out today, huh? Yeah, well, you know, ain't too bad, though. You know, this county is already dry as it is. City council's talking about some kind of water conservation. Huh. I was reading about it in the papers the other day. It's been tough. Water's pretty low in this county already. I'll drive you home. It's no trouble. No, it's okay. I'm almost home. Your feet will get all sore walking like that. I'm okay. Hey. Hey, watch out for that snake. Aha. Uh -huh. Are there any rattlesnakes around here? I don't know. Sure you don't want to ride? Like living here? You wouldn't want to trade all this in for a city. Sure, any day. I think I'd like to live here, even with the snakes. How come you walked away so fast? That man back at the gas station, he was mad. He's my uncle. Is he? You don't look a thing like him. Is your home nearby? Up ahead. I don't see any house up there. <laughs> you can't see it from here. You know, when you smile, you're a very pretty girl. You should smile all the time. You never did tell me your name. It's Nancy. Nancy? Nancy what? I don't know. Nancy, I don't know? Well, goodbye. I'm gonna cut over this way. It's a shortcut. Shortcut? To where? I don't know. To your house, Nancy? Yeah. No, it's to our lane. Our lane is half a mile long. Is it? Your house must be way back there. Well, 
Goodbye. Hey, you know what? I like shortcuts and secret paths. I'll walk with you a little way. What are you? You're a brave little girl to go around barefoot like that. Or are your feet tough on the bottom? I'm all right. Hey, Nancy, where are you going? <laughs> you always walk so fast. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is that all you can say, Miss? I don't know. <laughs> That's a funny name. Is it foreign, Nancy? No. Oh. Uh, this path is a booby trap, huh? You have any other tricks for me, Nancy? Hey! Hey, you're going off the path. It's against the rules. Oh, little Nancy, you're like a, a wild colt or a deer. You're so graceful. Face amusing. What do you see in my face, Nancy? You see my soul? Do you see me? Is that what you're laughing at? Nancy. Slow down, Nancy. Hey! Jesus. This is a little trial for me, isn't it, huh? Is that how your little game goes, Nancy? in your car. <clears throat> Better go home, go home. Get in your damn car and go home. <clears throat>
Where have you been? I told you to come right back. I came right back. You're all dirty. And you look like hell. What happened to you? Nothing. We have so many questions to ask. We only have a few I minutes, know, so uh, I'll fire away. First of all, is the screenplay, was that from the short story? Yeah, it, it took some adaptation. I had to cut a lot out and make my own adjustments. But yeah, the, a lot of, most of the dialogue is hers, yeah. Oh, great acting. Where did you find the actors? That was a lot of <laughs> The little girl, obviously, was my priority because it was uh, yeah. the main role. Excellent. She was terrific. She was I know. Fantastic. She still she's she works a lot. She was the most professional of all the actors. On now is she set. really twenty eight years old and looks like she's thirteen? Twelve. <laughs> twelve. She's, she's twelve. twelve. Wow. She's twelve. Huh. Did you somehow relate to her? I envisioned her like completely different, and then uh -huh. this girl came into the casting room, and she was just ah, oh, she owned all of it. She was she just has this innate sense of self confidence and power that is inexplicable, which mm -hmm. is exactly how the, the character is. She's just powerful beyond her means, you know, it's, and that was her. It was was that you that depicted mm -hmm. a stronger character? Is that how Joyce Carol Oates depicted her? Joyce Carol Oates wrote her that way. She's okay. almost like she comes off as um, not a very nice girl. <laughs> kind of like a Lolita. Reminded exactly. me a little bit of a Lolita. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Even you almost had the heart sunglasses uh, right, yeah, yeah. at the beginning, <laughs> It's a little too. nod. <laughs> yeah. Where was it filmed? It was filmed in a San Luis Obispo area. Uh huh. That took a long time to find too. <laughs> There's not a lot of uh, open expanse of space in this area, so. Why? Why that story? What? I just I think it speaks to a lot of um, like speaks to me as a as a female. How? And I mean that's what I guess. How? I'm You're to like, get come at. on, yes. asking the hard questions here. <laughs> um, I just I I. Uh, I, I remember those moments of being looked at um, when you're you're young and you're innocent mm -hmm. and you haven't crossed that threshold of, mm -hmm. of being conscious of your sexuality and mm -hmm. the effect that it has on a man. Um, that first and foremost. And I think that there's just um, an interesting... Feel that, some that guilt about that? There's so many things mm -hmm. that go on there. You, you mm -hmm. realize how you can use it, when you... I mean, all, it's just, it's a world of information for a female. Um, I don't know, I just, and it was very much, I thought it was very much um, identifying with who I was as a filmmaker at the time, and I thought that I was going to make that open choice. Mm -hmm. so. What do you think she was thinking of at the end? Oh, that, I love that, the end. I, that love, was, that, I love that, that's why I'm, yeah, that's why I'm wondering. The end was. And, that, and that's a mark of a really good film, when you get into the character's head and you're trying to think, oh, what is she what thinking was she of? What she thinking? Yeah. Do you know, do you know how, how we did that last shot? 
the actress, she's so young, you know, so at some point in time she understands these things, but yet doesn't. She doesn't really, right. And um, I was like, okay, I'm just going to look at you, and you're going to look at me, and we're going to give each other the same thing. And so okay. I just... So that's, you played her, and she bounced back. We just, Good we just, communi we just communicated something. Yeah. And it uh -huh. was this... It was this um, a disturbing experience that you will never forget. You know, it's it's there, and it's just it it kind of shapes you. And but it made her more. It made her stronger. It made her not innocent. Right. It was almost like what I got from it a little bit, which I don't know if I should admit, <laughs> but that she wanted to go back. There. Uh, well, there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing I've gotten from this this end shot is that people. There's something very open-ended about it, and I think that mm -hmm. at the end, because I couldn't figure out how to end the movie, you know, because the short story, there's, there's a little bit more dialogue, and I felt it was pretty powerful to end with saying, you know, nothing to right. her mother when <laughs> absolutely Which the opposite. Which is what we all did to our mother right. at 12. And that's exactly, right. too, there's that, that, that separation yeah. with your parents. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we just came up with, you know, an open-ended kind of shot, but yet it, it does, I think it's very specific in, in her... Her emotion. Did Joyce Carol Oates see the film? I, she did. What, what was, so what was her response? <clears throat> she was lovely. She, um, I sent the film to her and her agent, and she wrote me an email, and she said that it, she was like, I, I had watched it with my friend again for a second time. I really enjoyed the cinematography, the lighting, the acting. She was just very, very complimentary. She was really kind about it. What's next for you in your career? I, oh God. You're I've, so talented. I've, <laughs> I've been trying so hard. I think I'm just going to go with my, I had a wild idea of writing a West, it's a Western. <laughs> and so I, the reason why I, I talk myself out of it is it's expensive to make. Mm -hmm. But um, it does involve um, prostitutes in the West. Hmm. So. Interesting. It, it uh, is. I just read a biography of Jimmy Stewart, and I didn't realize he was in so many westerns. But that's a genre that we need more of. So I, I, I encourage you sure go fire. for it. I, I love yeah. westerns. You know, we don't well, get there's enough romance of them. And there's a story and there's, there's action. Yes. Well, if you make it, I'm going to want to see it. Okay. So good, good. luck to you, Gillian, <laughs> thank you so much. and uh, uh, thank you for all the credit you reflect on Chapman. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You're fantastic. <laughs>